Let's try tucking a couple casts past this boulder out here. Tenkara is really good at fishing places like this that other anglers kind of have to pass up just because of the currents in front of them. But I can, I can uh, make a cast right into that pocket, let it sit there, get a nice natural drift. There's a nice fish. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. He was holding right in that pocket, um, just behind that log that's sticking out there. I don't know what it is yet. It's got some good heft to it though, especially in this current. He's just sticking right on the bottom there. We're using the Tenkara Rodco Rocky today. This is uh, one of my most used rods. I like throwing big nymphs with it. It's really solid for that. Um, just because it's got such a backbone, you can really feel um, a bite when it happens. It's very sensitive just because it's so stiff. And of course, it's good at uh, fighting some big fish as well. It looks like we got a nice solid rainbow on land here. Real nice fish. Almost ready. There we go, that's a solid rainbow right there. All of 16, 17 inches. I usually fish a lot smaller bodies of water, but um, this is pretty dang cool. It's like some real uh, a river runs through it kind of vibes here, <laughs> like a classic western stream. Got a similar setup here with a log as a current break. Oh, there was a, there was a bit. Yeah, I came right out. Came out. <laughs> Sorry, we got a little worked up there. I just saw a trout uh, dash out from the log on the right. Looked to be a little smaller, but uh, he hit that streamer and then he got out of there. Here we go. Come on. Yeah, a lot of times with trout when they're held up, you got one chance to get that reaction strike and then it's kind of over. We're gonna keep moving on. We're working this water quick, looking for current breaks, fishing those. There's a deceptive amount of water flowing through here. And uh, I don't, at least until I'm proven wrong, I don't think the trout are gonna be held up, um, you know, in the, in the stronger runs. There was a bite. Another fish. Oh yeah. <laughs> yes.
All right. Oh man, this is actually turning out to be pretty cool. Like I said, I really don't fish these big rivers all that often, but uh, out here on a Tuesday morning, on a nice calm, windless morning, it's a good time to be here, that's for sure. And it looks like we got ourselves a nice little brown. Two on the board in pretty quick order. I'm gonna keep working these potentially undercut banks, shady zones, areas with a little bit slower current. Definitely looks very, very fishy over here. Well, there we go. Love that cast. Mm. Oh my gosh, nice fish just came right off the front of that rock. Like instantaneously, as soon as the streamer hit the water, he rose up on it. Looked to be a decent sized rainbow just from the quick glimpse that I got. Always important to remember, targeting behind rocks is always good, but uh, a lot of times trout sit right in that pillow, right on the front of a big boulder as a way to, way to rest, minimize their energy. Ah, oh, man. I'm still hoping to find a deep bucket that has more than one fish, you know, kind of actually hanging out and actively feeding instead of just triggering reaction strikes. Of course, that might come a little bit with the territory of fishing a streamer. Sometimes I wonder if I should fall back on the streamer as often and as heavily as I do. Um, I don't know, there's just something about it that I like though and uh, it works very well the majority of the time. I can cover a lot of water. I can pick apart pocket water, which is kind of my favorite type of water to fish. But, you know, sometimes I wonder, hey, what if I was throwing a dry right now? Would I be getting dry fly eats? Or if I was just using a, you know, a nymph rig, would I be getting more fish besides just the ones that are holding up in these really obvious uh, holes? you know, behind rocks and stuff like that. But I don't know. <laughs> and here we are, you know, the streamer is working. It's working all right. Um, so I'm gonna keep fishing it and uh, hopefully we'll find some more fish. Do you guys have a certain style of fishing or certain flies that you fall back on? And do you think that that's a good idea to fish what works, to fish what you're confident in? Or would it be better off to kind of mix it up a little bit more? Oh, there's a fish, there's a fish, follower. Oh man, that looked like a, I don't know. I don't know what it looks like. <laughs> a trout, that's what it looks like. But yeah, I saw him, I saw him follow right off the bank there. Oh, that was a bite there. This pocket looks really, really nice. All right, well, instead of wondering about the streamer versus nymph or, you know, switching it up type of thing, let's actually just switch up to a double uh, nymph rig and uh, work it through this same really good looking hole here and see if we come up with any fish. That'll, uh, that'll show us whether there are more fish down there and uh, whether they're not looking for uh, a big streamer. So I'll switch it up and try that out. All right, back in we go to fish this promising looking run. Uh, I've got a uh, rainbow warrior on as my point fly and then below that a copper toned woolly waltz worm as the trailer. Oh, I just saw a rise right there, right where the water gets shallow. Let's make a cast through. Yes, perfect, perfect. 
No take. Let me try again. I guess that does show that there are more fish in here though. Out in the actual run this time. Even if they don't want my flies right now, that's still a good sign. Well, it's definitely not working spectacularly, that's for sure. <laughs> Haven't even noticed a nibble. Of course, I did just work through this run, so even after this one, maybe I'll keep, keep my nymph rig on just for a little while longer up at the next run. But um, if we don't get any action sooner or later, I'm sure I'll switch back to that streamer after all. Surprising there aren't more fish in here. There we go. Finally nymphed one up there. Surprised it took that long, but happy that I got him now. This is a massively deep pool here, so I mean, it seemed like there must be trout in it, right? Looks like I got him on the waltz, on the dropper. Another nice brown here. Very cool. This place is like a playground. Easy to walk through, <laughs> easy to fish. As far as, uh, you know, as far as the bank and stuff, you're not slipping around everywhere. I can definitely see the appeal in that way. You know, usually I'm putting in, putting in miles, usually two, three miles, getting off trail, stuff like that. And uh, that'll always be where my heart lies, but I'm having a great time this morning. Nice to change it up. And the size of these fish certainly is pretty special as well. Really solid, solid fish in here. The million dollar question is, would I have caught that fish if I still had my streamer on? And uh, if I had to guess, I would say no. I think I probably would have gotten a bite. Um, a lot of times with the streamer, you get little reaction strikes, little nips, um, but not with a real commitment. Um, so I think it's possible that Brown could have swiped at it, but I think because I had that nymph on, he actually decided to eat it. He was clearly eating. He was in a feeding lane in a nice big pool. And uh, I think using this nymph rig actually netted me one more fish today. There we go. Man, strong fighter. We're gonna bring him back to the back of the pool. That's something that I'm always doing, trying to get the fish kind of away from where I think the rest of the fish might be, uh, to try to disturb them as little as possible, give me the best chance that I can for uh, catching a fish in the future. If I can do anything I can to not blow up the hole completely, I definitely will. I was making casts to a, a bunch of fish that were chilling right in the very, very, very slack part, but they were just glued to the bottom. My nymphs were going right by and they were not interested. Cast it out into the, uh, into the faster current and uh, got this guy on the line now. 